We are now joined live by Baylor head football coach Dave Aranda with us in studio with Paul Craig, and I'm David Smoke. Thank you for your time. Uh, how important was it to get that decision with Jake Spavital, offensive coordinator, for many reasons and do it as quickly as you did? It was, um, there's a lot of decisions. There's a lot of decisions being made. And whether it's, um, there's coaching staff that's going to be affected by the, by the hire. There's going to be players that are affected by the hire. And so to, um, to put the work in and then to really identify the right guy, uh, the right coach uh, for us, and then to go through all of it and the, with the help of our administration at Baylor, and the, the timeline that we did it just really was a godsend and helps us move forward as a team. So what about uh, Jake brought you? I know that you're going to have to spend more time on the offensive side of the ball. He's been a head coach or a defensive side of the ball. He's been a head coach, can kind of maybe help uh, be in the meeting room a little bit longer to take up for that time. What are those things that, that drew you to Jake uh, as the coach? Well, I know that, um, you know, the – um, there's a, a history of him and just the places he's been and the players that he's coached and there's an energy about him and uh, there is a um, uh, there is a, a kind of a, uh, a recipe for his success in terms of explosiveness and and running the ball and, and big plays and all of it but really the the thing that I saw first and really stuck out to my mind is that he went to Cal and Cal was a pro-style offense that recruited for a pro-style offense and was averaging these many points and these many yards per game. And then in a year, went from 23 points to 31 points and went over 400 yards with the recruiting classes that they had with tight ends and 12 personnel. And so it was like whatever it was, he was able to make it work. And I think that's, I mean, that is really in, in a lot of ways our situation I think offensively we we have similar numbers this year, and so to find to find Jake and he did it there for him to come on over and really work to do it here was way special. Coach, uh, you I guess there's reports out there AJ Stewart will be moving on as well, and I guess when you have a new offensive coordinator, there's just going to be uh, various changes that are going to occur. So can you kind of take us through the process of just sort of where you guys are? I guess AJ moving on and kind of what that's going to look like with Jake now coming in here over these next few days and weeks? Yeah, I think anytime you bring in uh, a coordinator, it's always going to affect the staff. And I think when we first started the search, one of the things uh, was we need the guy that's the best guy for us that can help us score points and help us win games. But somewhere in that, in that list of most important, it was how can we keep the majority of the guys that we got? And you just feel a loyalty to them, and they're working hard and all of it. And so I just felt that Jake was the best fit, and you know, with it comes movement of the staff. And so just so appreciative of AJ and just you know his family would be there after, after practices and the players would hang out with his kids. And so all of it is hard. Any, you know, this, this time of year when you don't have success, is the hardest part about the business and so to go into it and be able to treat everyone right and try to be kind of that um, um, if it's a bunch of darkness to kind of be the light is really what the the uh, the role that we're playing now and so I wish him the best and and uh, very thankful for everything he did when Spavital was the head coach at Texas State we had him on a few times and he went straight transfer portal it didn't work his record wasn't all that good but he has recruited before is his main job is to bring in transfer portal to fit his offense or do you have that personnel right now on campus we feel good about the personnel that we have. I think we're right now, you know, uh, Jake is speaking with uh, Blake right now, right? right as I, so we had a team meeting. We introduced Jake, and then um, he's he's meeting with Blake Shapin right now, you know. And so we'll see what becomes of that. I think we've got guys that really fit what he can do. And I think, um, you know, our ability to to get everyone to see the vision and to see what it can be and – and to um, um, have a refresh with all of that, I think, is way important. But then, but then I do think, you know, the the days of the developing players, the days of, uh, you know, here's someone that's getting a bunch of reps and he's kind of learning through the 
the um, the the failures and kind of the hard knocks life of a freshman or sophomore, I think we just kind of illustrated that that's very hard to do and it's really almost outdated to do. And so to bring in people that can come in and have experience and play and to have a um, 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 experienced guys up front, to have experience on the on the perimeter is going to be important. So there, there will be portal people coming in. You know, he, he's already looked at the recruiting class that we have um, that's been locked in for a little bit and is way excited about those guys, and so we're looking forward to move move forward with them. But I think uh, there's a lot happening for him in these next couple of days. And so when we first met, I, we kind of went through it, and it's like, man, that sounds like a lot, and it is. And, it's, and he, he mentioned, you know, drinking water through a fire hose, and so it'll be like that for a couple of days. So – I know that it's not just an offensive philosophy change that you're making because you have to change the philosophy of how you guys have done NIL and how you guys have approached the transfer portal. How much of that, especially for you as a person who, as a coach, I, I don't know if I know anybody who has like is a more idealist than you. And I, I mean that as like a, a very, a great compliment because it's, it's very unique in, in, in a profession that can just kind of be go, go, go and, and move in chess pieces around the board without kind of regard for the, the surroundings. How hard was that for you to break off of what you, you kind of hoped those things would be and then jump into what they are while still fitting into what you're comfortable doing yourself? Yeah, I think that's life right there. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, another word for that could be maturity. Mm -hmm. Um, I think any time you take the world as it is, mm -hmm. and then you, on one side, and you look at the, the, the world as it should be, and you find a way that those two, si that those two things can connect, mm -hmm. and you can hold the tension of both and walk that path, I think that's totally it, you know? And so, yeah, that, that is what we're doing here. And, um, you know, I think well, I look at Jake just offensively, you know, um, heavy run game. And the run game was really what propelled a lot of their success the last half of the season. So there's counter in there, there's split zone in there, there's inside zone, there's wide zone in there, um, and then the RPOs that come off of it. But the run game, you know, so we had not announced the hire yet, and um, it was already out. And so, uh, you know, I'm I'm going through, um, kind of checking on guys, just wait, making my rounds through, and it. About every office door was closed, and behind it were players watching Cal Berkeley film, you know. Oh. And so they're all watching it. And so there's there's Sawyer, and he's watching uh, with Jake Roberts the Cal-USC game. And I go a little bit further, and there's Jordan Neighbors, and he's watching Cal-UCLA. And so it just kind of kept on. And so I just think they see the physicality. They see the excitement of big plays. Right there's a quick motion and you know uh, Cal's got four and they got three and the ball's out and you know here's a here's a play action pass here's an RPO throw and they hit the bang and he's in the he's in the seam and so they're excited about that so I think that's that is something where I think you know it's not a huge transition from um, maybe one style to like a, a ten personnel four wides thing there's the ability he just showed to build and incorporate tight ends and to use the people that we've got on campus and not just use them, but feature them. And really, you know, he had a, a freshman tight end that just had a bunch of yards and, you know, our tight ends are fired up and rightfully so. So that was before the announcement was even made. There's yes. just rumors out there. Yes. They're already watching film. That's pretty cool. Yes, that would be another change. <laughs> that would be another <laughs> that would be another one. Everyone's got their phones and stuff leaks and it's just that's what it is. We've seen a lot of declarations. I mean, even just today, guys, hey, staying at BU, GXG Exchange, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a new era. Uh, yes. You're obviously adopting and evolving with it as well, as uh, has been quite talked about. What's that like, though, to kind of the uh, the reaffirmations of, hey, I'm going to be here, and just the whole process of going through that and kind of knowing your roster and what you want, what you you know, kind of maybe want to change? Can you kind of just take us through that part of the the roster journey right now? Yeah, I think it's a good. It is a good thing. Uh, I think that uh, because it's real, and I think it's life. You know, I think some of the things for us we're coming from um, person over player, and that's always going to be my perspective through it. But you know, there's things to where, um, regardless of outcome, regardless of of play or lack of or any of that, 
you know, I'm sitting down with someone asking about their family, talking to them about, you know, how they're doing with school, how they're handling, right, the, the, the failure, how they're handling the misfortune, and here's how we can respond. I'm talking that way. And so it is, um, you know, to me that's really important when you're, when it, it is uh, GXG and it's NIL, then there, I mean, we can say a bunch of things, but there's, here's someone that's, you're a 70,000 dollar person you're a twenty thousand dollar person and you're a hundred thousand dollar person and you'd like for that to be just within a small circle but that that is i think that would be idealist and so now you're living with just the transactional nature of everything and so and then you know then it becomes how that is life right there and so how to handle that how to see that get out of your own lens right this is the this is the lens of your production right and so we can do things better here I think in the past we've talked about to care and not to care, and hey, let's this can be this can be a thing where we can get stuff done and we can improve, and then I think with that, then this 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 other thing will go up, and so I think those are all conversations that uh, at some point, right, you're going to have when you're in the real world and and all of it, but you know we call it football now we're having them now. GXG, by the way, uh, we had a conversation with them. They're one of our new title sponsors with 365 Sports. We appreciate John, Jeremy, and others, Kaylee, uh, for that, that conversation and also what they're doing with us. Uh, you and I, and you have said this before and other things as well, as far as the way things went, storm around your name, all of that. And no one knew. You didn't know until Sunday mm -hmm. sometime late morning. Do you feel like this is kind of a... I don't want to say breath of fresh air because you have work to do. And the results, is it like a new lease on life or a second type chance for you here at Baylor? Well, it's been, I look at it as work. I look at it as, uh, and, and um, I can understand the question, uh, but it's, you know, um, yesterday was, was a good day, but it was also a tough day, hard conversations. The last couple days have been, been good days, but tough conversations. There's going to be a whole lot more tough conversations, and I think, you know, to to embrace the truth and to kind of see it, and it first starts with me, and then it goes to everyone else. I mean, that's just tough work to do, you know, and so I think that is really the the work that's ahead, and then from there, you know, starting football. So in the past, we would really not start football until really kind of the a week prior to spring ball. And we're going to start as soon as we get back on campus. So we'll be doing, having uh, meetings and walkthroughs and all of it starting in January, you know, as early as we can go. And so the the ability to, um, you know, we got to get the football right. We have to be able to do that. And then while we're embracing these other things, that whether it's NIL or it's it's more aggressive uh, uh, transfer portal thing and to, to be able to keep our culture and then still you know, using that to get better play and better execution on the field. I think the ability to, to do football in the beginning and, like, we have a play that, let's say, you know, I look at that last, that touchdown by West Virginia uh, at the end of the game. You know, that call, right, that defensive call, we want to rep that here in another month, that call. And we want to rep it from January all the way through the year and so that when we rep it in November – we got it because it's that's that's what we do and that's us and so that's going to be the challenge and I think like the um, the ability for everyone to kind of see that and that it, hey you know we've got a normal Tuesday and a normal Wednesday but when we come into football it's fourth and one right now like this matters we got to get this right you know it's January whatever and we're going to get it right my eyes are going to be in the right spot and this you know matters I think that's going to be the direction. Were you on the headsets on that play? Is that so, I, know, I know Matt Pallage is the a defensive coordinator, but was that something where you were involved during that time, that last drive? I wasn't. Yeah. So I'm listening to the calls. You know, I think any 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 time. You know, to me, the the end result, the end is always it's predicated by how you start. And so if so, I'm thinking about now and moving forward. Right, the ability to have like cleats in the grass. Hey, this is what our alignment is. This is where my eyes go. This is the how I'm seeing this formation. This is where my eye progression goes. 
this is I'm working with in conjunction with this other linebacker. If I feel that allows us to cut the playoff so you can fold back, right? If we take a step and stack our D linemen, this allows this allows uh, the D lineman now to to get a single block because we're going to show f color, and the guard is going to come off, and we're going to get a single by. Uh, the tackle on the four eye, and so like all of those things have to be like way home base, and it has to be such a um, you know within each each nuance is like a whole universe, dude. And so we have to build make that clear to all of them. I mean, they have to, the, especially the linebackers. I'm excited about really being with them, but um, you know, there's talent there. There's the want to there. I think the, to be, get the detail down and to get the 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 right type of focus. And it's fourth and one, dude, right? We need this done on whatever, January the whatever, is really a missing piece and excited about going that, that way. Earlier, you mentioned the transactional nature of things that have come to college football that, that were there in maybe like some smaller senses of this guy you, doesn't fit the roster anymore. It's time to maybe move on. And, you know, you have to have those conversations. But because there's now money involved yes. and – big money involved uh, for, for young kids. How much do you have to retrain them to take the news like professional athletes would? Because that's like NFL players, it's different. You get cut or you get this discussion or this money's coming or that money's coming. Is They know that because they've, they've dealt with it, right? They knew going in. College is new to this. How hard is that for coaches in college to retrain themselves to – have that relationship, but also still be a college coach and not a pro coach? Yes. Yeah. Great question. I think the, you know, I think all of us as coaches aren't really trained to do that. I mean, that's more, you're, that's more of a dad mm -hmm. than anything else with your son. Yeah. Or that's more of a mentor. But I think, you know, what can happen very easily um, is you could have a veteran guy who's um, a good player and say he's battled through injuries. And let's say, you know, he's played some and made some plays and all of it. And he's looking at his life journey as, man, I've I've sacrificed all of this. I've come back from this. I've achieved a little bit here. I've bled on this. I've done all of these things. But then, um, you know, there's another side of it that looks, well, your production is very, very little. Mm -hmm. And what that means is the result is this. And I think that is like a lightning bolt to that person. And, um, and I think, but that's the reality and that's the truth. And so to, to deliver that in a way um, that it's not like a, doesn't create a bitterness or doesn't create a resentment or doesn't create an anger, but can um, build a perspective and, uh, hey, this is what it is, right? Now, how can we move in this space Right, uh, so that 20 years from now you look back and you go, man, I'm proud of how I handled all of that. Let's do that. I think that's the that's the uh, the talk, and we're having a bunch of those talks. <laughs> <laughs> from an, from an I can imagine, yeah. From from an on field standpoint, I, the young secondary. I mean, they mm -hmm. took their lumps, obviously, but that's mm -hmm. an area where you're like freshman, freshman, sophomore. Mm -hmm. Like you could really, mm -hmm. if you can hold on to those guys, right? That's the part of it. Now is mm -hmm. it can be something special. There weren't a lot of highlights per se on the field, but when you look back at what you did see, what kind of building blocks, whether it's a position group or whether it's a particular player, what what have you, what did you see that encourages you about this team and, and heading into next year from that standpoint? Yeah, there is talent there. I thought our corner class in particular can really, really be good. I think, you know, uh, LeVar played some. He played his four games, and then – uh, he didn't play in the last game so that we can preserve all of it. Uh, way talented. I mean, you know, he might have been the MVP of just the um, the practices, you know, going against the one offense and just all of it. He would continually make plays and challenge guys and, and uh, just make ama amazing plays, really. And so uh, then you got Caden Jenkins that was able to really excel and excelled from the moment that he got here. And then Carl Williams and his ability to make plays. So that they, there are playmakers there. There is the ability to say, hey, we're going to line up and we're going to take this away just by our press and our leverage and everything else. And 
We haven't been able to do that, and I think we've got the guys that can do that. And so to be able to train them in such a way uh, that, um, you know, that's the expectation and that's the standard is way cool. I'm way looking forward to that. You know, some of the defenses I've been a part of, that has been a necessary piece, you know, um, is press coverage and man-to-man -man and all of it. And I think uh, we've got guys that have shown um, pieces there. I think what, you know, the difference is the eye progression. The difference is, is the um, – is the fourth and one. I really think that's what it is, is that this matters right now, and I'm going to win this. I'm not okay with taking a loss right here. I'm not okay with this guy catching the ball. I'm not okay with the offense winning this series. I'm going to win this. I'm going to do it, and I can do it. You know. And so I think all of that is really what we're doing when we're doing football starting as soon as we are. Dave, last question for you. Uh, everybody has an ego, but you seem to not really have that, not outwardly, although everyone has confidence in themselves. How much has this checked your uh, or humbled you with, with what, as you know about football, yet the results were not there this, this year? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, was, I just was just prior to coming here, was talking to um, Coach Leopold at Kansas, and, and he is a great friend and is a great coach, and when we first started to talk, you know, you could just step in, Dave, how's it going? You know, it's like, it's, it's like a, I survived like a bear attack, you know, it's like, Dave, how's, and I just, um, I don't know, I, the, you know, I want to say the right words here, like, I, like, I know who I am, you know, I know whose I am, and um, I'm, like, way confident in all of that. And I know that, you know, at the end of this, I know that in terms of, like, people and in terms of, uh, uh, you know, staff and players, administration, all of it, that I wouldn't take anything back in terms of treating people and all of it. And that is the most important thing to me. And so I'm way confident about that you know i think the the football is just way disappointing and that's where the 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 frustration really occurs and so i know when this came up in um defense and stuff i think you know um there's an opportunity to look at well you know is it do we do this do we that i just think so much of matt and just what he can be and you know we're at the end of the game or we're at the end of the season and and Given up too many points, given up too many big plays, just just not it, right? But I'm seeing players play for him. I'm seeing, you know, here's another big play, right? And we come back to the sideline, and Matt's clapping and doing all the stuff, and we get to the sideline, and I'm seeing players look him in the eye, and Matt's got him believing again, which I had not, I have not been a part of that where it had been, you know, it was this rough of a thing, and then you go back on the field and they're trying. And so the connection there is just so strong, you know. And so I know that Matt can really be great, but we have to be great this year. And so I know that for me, um, that was where I had to step in. And so I'm excited about that. And, um, you know, I, Matt has been great with it. And so it'll be him and I working together. But, um, yeah, I think the football has to get right. And, you know, for it to be, um, you know, uh, this record and this defense and everything else, that's the part that just makes you ill. And it's hard to walk around with it, but it will be great motivation for the future. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. I know you got a lot of decisions and much more to do. We appreciate you coming to the studio. Madeline, also appreciate you and, and Brent for bringing Coach Aranda to the studio. Thanks for your time. Good luck. No, thank you, guys. Baylor right. football coach Dave Aranda will come back and discuss.